This Color Land Living segment is sponsored by Mapping Your Future Incorporated, a national collaborative public service nonprofit organization providing career, college financial aid, and financial literacy services for students, families, and schools. Navigating the complex landscape of college financial aid can be a daunting task for families. With rising tuition costs and a number of financial aid options available, understanding the process of maximizing opportunities can feel overwhelming. Catherine Mueller is the executive director of Mapping Your Future, and Amy Christinger is the vice president for student affairs and enrollment management at Dakota State University. They're here to share some resources and advice that could help to smooth the path to higher education for students and their families. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, welcome. I, so I'm interested in, to kind of know from, from your perspective, really, like how South Dakota sits in the world of financial aid and, and student debt. Well, there's really good news for South Dakotans because uh, South Dakota has the highest return on investment. When students go to college here, they earn more uh, and they have invested less in their college education because the cost of living here is less, the cost of attendance of going to institutions, plus the programs that are offered by the institutions here in South Dakota really prepare students for great careers. Wow. So when it comes to student debt, how, um, like, what is DSU's kind of approach to making sure that it is, that students who go there are, in fact, in that position, right? Certainly. So, um, yes, to kind of piggyback off of what she's saying, we do feel like we have a great mix of programs that students can get engaged with and be really successful in their careers. When we're talking about cost of attendance, um, that is a something that we work with the South Dakota Board of Regents on. And so that is really across the board at all of the state institutions in South Dakota, helping to make sure that we're doing everything we can to keep costs lower. Uh, we have had a number of years over the course of my career there where we have kept tuition and fees at a flat rate as we move from one year to another. And we put different things in place. We work with um, high schools now on dual credit, which is a great way for students to save money. And then of course, if you have um, financial aid working with your admission counselors, the financial aid office at your schools, taking advantage of all of the programs, whether they're federal aid related or whether they're more institutional aid or other options like that. Can you uh, talk us through a little bit about uh, where we rank, where South Dakota ranks um, in our state, against other states, I guess, as well. And sure. we have a you little bit of a speak to that here. from the, yeah. yeah. Oh, there yep. you go. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we talked about the, the great place we are, right. but there's other components and metrics to look at, too, in terms of the student debt. Sure. Uh, South Dakotans, more college students take on student loan debt here in South Dakota. That may be uh, because it is a need here in South Dakota to have access to student loans to, in order to finance their education. Uh, with that in mind, though, I will say South Dakotans take on less student loan debt on average than other states in the country. So we're at about an average of 30000 uh, in student loan debt among South Dakota students when they graduate from college. Uh, that is a lot of money, but it's also an investment in themselves. Mm -hmm. And so that's important to remember. Uh, they do need to manage it well, though, and not take on any extra student loan debt. Look at other sources of financial aid first, like scholarships and grants, and make sure they fill out the FAFSA. Uh, because that'll be important for them to get some of that aid that they're eligible to receive. And it's not too late. It's not too late. No, it's not too late. Uh, that's important to remember. So if you're thinking about going to college in a few weeks in the <laughs> fall, uh, it's not too late to fill out the FAFSA. Uh, you can actually fill it out in any at any time in the next academic year for the 24-25 academic year. Uh, so it's important to go ahead and fill it out. You may have heard some things that people were having problems with it. They were. It's actually gotten a lot easier now. Uh, and so a lot of the problems that students and parents were having have been fixed. Uh, and so I encourage students to fill it out. Uh, and I think they'll find it's a lot easier. There was sort of an overhaul in January of this year, right? That That's there correct. was some glitching and it wasn't quite ready, but it is now. It is ready. <laughs> what are some um, hints and helpful tips you can give to students looking to minimize the amount of debt they want to take on? Uh, go ahead. You Okay. Well, I talked a little bit about dual credit. So mm -hmm. in the state of South Dakota, if you're a high school student, you have the opportunity to take college courses as a high school student at a much reduced rate. The state helps us to subsidize the cost of that to some degree. And so rather than paying maybe um, anywhere from $800 to $1,000 per course, you're paying $150-ish per course. So take advantage of that. And then the FAFSA, we've just worked so hard this year with, because of some of the glitches with the federal aid, making sure that we're communicating with students and letting them know 
know that yes, we have, make sure that you're doing that. Um, Take advantage of your financial aid offices, your admission counselors. You should be developing this relationship with the admission team so that they can help you um, find different scholarship websites, places that are reputable, reputable and places that you're going to want to go to. Um, there's work. There is um, when you are reviewing websites for cost, to her point, a lower cost of attendance in the state of South Dakota when you're reviewing websites for that, taking a look at not just tuition and fees, but get a good handle on what is your room, what is the board, all of the other fees that may go into that so that you have a really better, more comprehensive picture of what the costs are so that you can address that when you're having conversations with the people that are there to help you. Students and parents might look at their investment in college a little bit differently. What should they really be considering when they think about what that investment looks like? Well, one of the things that I would recommend that they look at is their chosen career field mm -hmm. and the potential earnings in that career field because you want to make sure that whatever student loan debt you take on or whatever cost you expend to go to college, that you're going to see that when you go into that career field. Uh, so that's really probably the biggest factor. We do have a debt salary wizard on our website, and so I would encourage people to look at that and see how much uh, earnings they could potentially have from a certain career field and then how much is a reasonable amount of student loan debt to take on based on that chosen career field. And there's a lot to think about, right? I mean, there are some career fields where where you go to school really matters a lot, investment banking perhaps, mm -hmm. and there are things like nursing and, and teaching where getting the degree and the education is the point and not necessarily the name brand of the school, right? So you can kind of look at all these different things and figure out what should I really be spending. Exactly. It's a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. uh, the websites at all of the universities have similar calculators too. So as you are comparing costs between the different places that you're looking, you have the opportunity to do that. And it takes into consideration things about you and your family, your income levels, your academics, so it can anticipate perhaps what sorts of scholarships you may receive in addition to the federal aid that you're applying for. So taking a look at those tools can be very helpful. And that's what your organization is all about, right, is helping people. Exactly. Because <laughs> there's so many things. Yeah. <laughs> we offer free help. Students and families can contact us uh, at our website, our 800 number, or our via email, and uh, we'll help anyone that contacts us. No cost involved, it's all free. How That's early great. should you contact? I mean, freshman, I have a sophomore in high school. <laughs> yeah. Is this yeah. time? <laughs> so I think freshmen should really start thinking about their career field because you wanna make sure you take the right courses in high school yep. to get into the college that you're trying to get into. Yeah. Uh, so that's real important. I know uh, what I'll be talking to my daughter about. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Right, Thank, Thank you, you so much. Mapping Your Future provides accurate and up-to-date information that helps students plan, prepare, and pay for higher education and contributes to national student loan default prevention efforts by providing information and services to students and their families. You can reach them by phone at 1-800-374-4072 or contact them by email. That address is feedback at mappingyourfuture.org. You can also find the answers for commonly asked questions at mappingyourfuture.org. This Kello Land Living segment has been sponsored by Mapping Your Future Incorporated, a national collaborative public service nonprofit organization providing career, college, financial aid, and financial literacy services for students, families, and schools.